Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to a big grin on my face because today I get to talk to you all about my beloved £2,000 cheap V8 Range Rover. Now the truth of the matter is that although despite what you might see on social media, 99% of the time I'm driving this around. I'm not driving nice £100,000 Audis around Paris. If you haven't seen that video where I raced my girlfriend to Paris, do click in the top right hand of the screen now and you can go and have a look. Back to reality though, this is a car that I've owned now for just over six months and at least in the past month or so, it's been the thing I drive every single day. I've now covered about 12,000 miles in this car. I've spent not quite 12,000, but it seems like it's sometimes pounds on this car, keeping it on the road. And for some reason, the fact that it looks really filthy and dirty just makes me very happy. So if you are a Range Rover owner yourself, you'll probably enjoy this video because you'll be able to sort of take a bit of comfort in the fact that I can relate to you and you can relate to me in terms of Range Rover ownership because I think we might have the same sort of opinion, so stay tuned. But also, if you are not a Range Rover owner and you'd like to own a Range Rover, well then maybe this will be an interesting insight as to whether you should make the leap of faith or not. I'll always tell someone that they shouldn't based on my experiences with this car, but then again, if I told you not to try crack at least once, well then sort of makes you want to do it even more, doesn't it? So we're not going to be taking any crack today, thank God. But as with most of our videos, we will jump in the Range Rover now and go for a drive around the nice countryside here in Buckinghamshire so that I can explain what's been going on with the car, what my plans are for it coming up, how much it has cost me to, to run, which is quite horrifying, just in terms of the sort of everyday costs and why I'm just not going to get rid of it and why I love it so much. I think it's a really interesting topic, this car, because I've never experienced anything quite like it in terms of how it makes me feel. <laughs> it's a strange one, but let's go in the car, have a little drive, listen to that V8 growl, and uh, hopefully you can find this one nice and interesting slash comforting. So here we are back in the Range Rover then, and honestly, where I spend most of my time when I'm driving, at the moment I have the Range Rover, the Porsche, and still my 7 Series, which is imminently to be sold. An update on that coming soon. On the drive, my Mercedes, I still own it, but it's being stored at my parents' house currently while I wait for some bits for that car to film in an upcoming video. But the truth of the matter is, with those cars, this is the one that I take almost every time, especially at this time of year. There's not much use for the Boxer, at least you can't get the most out of it with the road conditions and opportunities to have the roof down are few and far between. And in terms of this versus the 7 Series, well, ultimately this pretty much does everything that the 7 Series does. No, it doesn't have the same amount of toys, but actually most of those toys are in the back of that car. And when I'm driving, it's kind of difficult to use the toys in the back. And this just gives you the same level of luxury and comfort and disconnect from the outside world that that car does. Not to mention, this doesn't have a crazy straight piped exhaust system on it. So it's rather, rather relaxing and quiet in comparison. However, this is a glimpse into the reality of owning a cheap Range Rover after about six months or so of running it. And the reality is pretty, pretty diabolical actually. It's not good news, but I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I'm surprised by that or that it's necessarily not worth it. I think the truest word that's ever been spoken by a car reviewer on YouTube is by my friend Matt at High Peak Autos, where he says, quite simply, buy the car you want and then repair it when it breaks. That is the bottom line. That is the truth. I think ultimately any car you buy is gonna have issues. Some, yes, maybe more than others. And the Range Rovers, of course, are notorious for being right at the upper echelon of that. But I still think that is, that is true. The car gives me so much joy that really I want it. I don't wanna get rid of it. And so I'll fix it when it breaks. However, the amount of stuff that does go wrong in this car, it's like I'm in a disaster movie most of the time. You can't quite believe it. Obviously, I paid 2,000 pounds for this Range Rover, which was the cheapest you could pay for a V8 petrol 
at the time. And so it's no surprise that it's cost me an arm and a leg to keep this on the road in that six months or so. But first, I can list off a plethora of things I love about this car. First and foremost, I love the driving position. You are genuinely sitting in an armchair. I like how high up you feel. And when you stick the car in off-road mode and the car raises by about four inches or so, that's even more pronounced and you just feel like the commander of the roads, especially around here when there's some nice country lanes. So the car is infinitely comfortable. You can really drive it to the moon and back without any issues. I like how the lights illuminate the road ahead at nighttime. Obviously the lights are pretty good on this car being a Range Rover, but again, because of the ride height and where they are positioned, you just see so much and it feels very, very safe when driving down very dark pitch black roads at night in this car. What I also love, this being a petrol V8, the 4.4 block, which is a BMW motor, is the sound. Now if I just pop it into manual gears here, let's get it into second. And when we come around this corner, I'll just give it a little bit of boot and you can hear what I mean. Very, very addictive sound and a reassuring little growl letting you know that you have all the power in the world that you need to face any mountain, any hill, any terrain and any eventuality. I love the way this car looks. Every time I get in, get out of it, I look back at it, not in the way that you'd look back at your classic Ferrari in that sort of beautiful way, but it is just so simple, the design of this car. And I think in turn, it's timeless. It still doesn't look old on the road, especially with the new model that's just been released. I still think the L322 holds its own and it looks great. Now, my one is obviously a 2003, which is the very second year of the L322's production. It was released in 2002 or very late 2001. And so this is pre-facelift. This is the first iteration of said L322 Range Rover. And I love that because it is the most classic looking one. But I do think if you go for the latest model, you have a sort of LCD display in front of you inside the car. The interior is a little bit more tricked out with heated and cooled seats, reversing cameras. And on the outside, it has various little updates to the vents, uh, the grill at the front, the lights, the rear lights. And all in all, probably looks like a bit more modern complete package and probably the sweet spot of the L322. I love the air suspension of this car and it might seem like a little bit of a gimmick but actually there's so many situations where I use it. I use it every time I drive it. In fact, every time I'm coming to a stop you flick this little button here just in front of your window controls and it lowers the car into access mode which brings it down to a nice height to jump in and out of. Also particularly helpful as I found out the other day when you're going to the tip and you're lifting heavy things in and out of the rear tailgate, it lowers it all down and makes it much, much easier to get to. And then, as I mentioned a minute ago, when you stick it into off-road mode and it raises you right up, obviously it has a great use for when you need that extra ground clearance, but it's raising back there into normal mode. It just feels so cool when you're at that sort of height. You're driving past buses and you're sitting higher than the drivers in those buses. It feels great. I love the long bonnet ahead of me that I can see. I love the color of this car. I think it really suits it. And I cannot stop telling you about things that I enjoy and love. And that's why it's such a weird car because it's like crack. It has such a negative impact on my life, but I would sooner go bankrupt than sell this car. And I mean that. Now that we're in winter and it's pretty cold and you can probably see from the camera shot, I have a couple of pairs of gloves on the dash one of them are not for me, but the really thick ones I wear when it's cold most of the time driving. And as is known by most, this car was designed at the time to be driven and to be operated whilst wearing gloves. That's why all of the buttons are really thick, easy to find, even the controls here, and you have absolutely no problem at all operating any control in this car with really thick gloves on. That's something else I really like. I mean, imagine trying to operate the haptic touch system on that Audi SQ8 I took to Paris with those thick gloves on it just it wouldn't be possible so it really is a car that you can just get in you can use you can go wherever you want or at least you feel like you can do that and that's what i think people love about range rover so so much now when we speak mechanically about this car it's not all bad news obviously it had lots of work done at richmond land rover in terms of the mechanics. Now, the engine seems really, really sound. I never have any issues with that at all. The gearbox also super smooth. 
every now and then likes to go into fail safe mode but you switch the car off and on again and it's absolutely fine that only happens maybe one in 20 times that you start up the radiator has been done so i have no leaks at all and actually i really feel like i can depend on this car every time i turn the key i know it's going to start and that is obviously such an important thing for your sort of daily driver now where this car lets you down uh, i mean let's be obvious here it has let me down severely a couple of times um, notably in wales when the brakes failed although arguably that is something that should have been picked up by richmond land rover before the trip i don't know how obvious it was and i know the brake lines are sort of hidden away above the wheel arches in some instances and so that did fail and that was awful and that really made me despise the car i have a little rattle from the boot at the back i think the upper tailgate is just not quite closing properly so at times on bumpy roads you can just hear that rattling away i thought it was the parcel shelf but that's actually not in at the moment and uh, it's still rattling so i think it's the upper part of the boot is just rattling a little bit obviously it's an old car so what do you expect also we have some knocks from the wheel that you can probably hear as we go over bumps and certainly as we turn right there was a little one there i don't know exactly what that is a lot of the suspension got done at richmond land rover so i'm thinking it's not that and maybe a wheel bearing issue i know the alignment is slightly off because i'm turning the wheel maybe 10 degrees white right to keep straight and also we still have that issue above 60 miles an hour where the wheel wobbles uh, sort of left to right quite violently the faster you go so that is the next thing i need to take the car into a garage to have a look at i've actually moved house quite recently so i'm looking for a new specialist that i can take the car to but let's hope that's just something fairly simple like the wheel balancing alignment or some sort of wheel bearing issue that can be sorted without much of uh, fright in terms of everyday running costs well tax on this car being a pre-2005 is only the 320 odd pound tax ban for the year not too bad at all insurance actually i think this is one of if not the cheapest car i have at the moment to insure something like five or six hundred pounds a year which for me is very good being a 24 year old uh, the main thing you notice obviously is fuel now that's for two reasons this car is not economical my average is 18.18 miles per gallon which is the worst of all my cars worse even than the 7 series that will average maybe 21 22 uh, but because this tank this fuel tank is 100 liters you notice when you fill the car up from empty how expensive it is and for example i put 100 pounds in the other day that gave me just over half a tank because fuel is about 150 a liter at the moment and i've done about 176 miles on that half still got about 60 miles of range or so but i'll be looking today to fill it up again and to fill up with the fuel prices being around 150 per liter at the moment it's about 150 quid so that does hurt a little bit every time you have to do that but for all of the aforementioned reasons it's not really a consideration because the car is so great so in short i can't really ever see myself being without a range rover going forward i think what i would like to do is get this one well keep this one try and just get those little niggles fixed so that it feels perfect and enjoy it for a little bit but definitely look to upgrade to a later l322 at least a facelift ideally a five liter supercharged from 2009 onwards i think that's when they came out because it will have all the tech that i want it will just be a nicer interior with the big sort of vented seats some rear recliners as well and a little bit more of an infotainment system going on here in the front with the sort of glass display in front of me that will really feel like it's a modern version and it will be the sort of best of the l322 which for me is still the ultimate range rover in my opinion now what i'm really excited about is that in a few weeks time just before the holidays i'm going to be taking this on sort of a off-road adventure playground day so that's going to be really exciting to see well what breaks but also how capable it really is after what 19 20 years this car is now almost about 18 years uh at off-roading and i have every hope that it will be a lot of fun and it will perform well we'll just have to see so i've arrived at my destination now i'm going to flick the button here we're under 20 miles an hour so the car will lower as i'm driving into access mode making it nice and easy for my old man back and my little legs to hop out of the car and with that 
I'll thank you guys so much for watching this um, and for just tuning in to the update on this Range Rover. Really, there's not much been going on. As you've seen, I've been working on lots of other projects on the channel lately, namely the Paris video we mentioned earlier. But I've just been using this car and running with it and sort of ignoring the minor little issues that we still have. But really, I'm doing a few hundred miles in this every week uh, without any incident. In fact, we've done now over 10,000 miles in the car since I bought it. I bought it on around 112, 112,000. We're now on 123,500. So 11 and a half odd thousand miles we've done in this car in just over the six months since I bought it in late April. So this car has been, or is at least now being very dependable. I'm enjoying it a lot. Katie, my girlfriend, absolutely loves this car as well. She enjoys driving it. And that's the other thing. I really enjoy being driven around in it. It's so comfortable and it just, it is that ride height and that, that driving position that I think just makes this thing so, so special. So yeah, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope that's been an okay update for you and gives you a little bit of a honest insight into what this car is like to run and to live with. I think bottom line is, as we started with, we'll finish with the line from High Peak Autos, is that you know you, you buy the car you want and, and you repair it when it breaks. And that's all and good if you can afford to do so, which I really can't. But like I say, this car is like crack. It's just so addictive and you know it's having a detrimental effect on your life, yet you can't stop taking it. Uh, I speak for no one there that I know. I've certainly never taken crack, but it's an analogy that I hope you might be able to understand somewhat. Needless to say, I'm loving this car. I'm going to bring some cool content with it uh, to the channel very soon with the off-roading stuff. And stay tuned onto the channel for an update on the 7 Series, which is still sitting very sadly on my drive, uh, because let's just say I got played like a piano with the initial sale of that car. So stay tuned to find out exactly what happened there. And... I'll see you all very, very soon.